Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Asad Mahmood and today I'll be talking about some Chrome extensions that I recommend which will help you as a freelancer and as a designer. So without further ado, let's just get started and do subscribe because I know most of you are not subscribed. So definitely subscribe because that really helps me grow my channel. So the first one that I would like to talk about is figure it out. So first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this one. So figure it out is actually a Chrome extension that allows you to see across multiple time zones. So on the right, this is my time zone. And then I have some time zones of my other clients like Mattermost and Sebastian. So imagine if you had multiple clients, you can see the time that's there on their time zone. So imagine if I wanted to book a meeting with Sebastian at his 2 p.m. I can see, okay, at his 2 p.m., my time or 2 p.m., my time is going to be, let's say, 5 p.m. Okay, that works. So I can go ahead and book that meeting. Similarly, if I wanted to have or add a client or add a client's time zone, I can say I want to add, let's say, a client that's in Tokyo, Japan, and maybe, and I can also give a name for him as well. So let's just go ahead and actually first select Tokyo. And then we have Tokyo here. I'm going to say his name is Hashimoto. I'm not even sure if that's a Japanese name, so apologies for all the Japanese viewers. <laughs> so imagine if I wanted to book a meeting at 12 a.m. or 12.15 a.m., I can easily see what that time is going to be at my time zone. One really great thing about this plugin is it's also very visual. So as you can see, 12 a.m. is sort of like midnight, so this is dark. 12 p.m. is close to midnight, so it's like purplish. 5 p.m. is more like in the evening, so it's orangish. Um, and then 11 a.m. is more to more close to uh, noon, so it's yellow. So it's really visual as well, and it's really easy to use, which is why I would recommend it if you are dealing with clients across different time zones. So that's the first one. I'm just going to reset it and delete this Hashimoto because I don't really have a client called Hashimoto. The other plugin that I would like to recommend, which I'm sure you've seen in a lot of recommendation videos, uh, is What Font. So if you've already seen this, you can skip this particular part of the video. What Font really allows you to do is it allows you to see the different fonts that are being used on a particular web page. So imagine if I really like this font that's being used, I can just select the What Font and hover over it. And I can also click on it to see the details about it. So the size is 58, the line height is 66, the font is Lato. The weight is 700 and I can see all of those details. Similarly, if I go to go here, as you can see, this is Leto 400. If I go here, this is like Leto 700. Similarly, if I go to dribble and try to use this font, I can see, okay, the font here is um, has grot text, whatever it is. And I can see, okay, the different fonts that are being used. Similarly here, this is 500, this one is 700. So you can see all of those details quite easily. Similarly, I can see, okay, this is 500. And obviously, as you can see, even my site or Dribbble like, usually uses a single font, which I would also recommend. So as you can see, uh, and you can just go ahead and play around with it. So that's that. The other plugin that I would like to recommend or extension that I would rec like to recommend is the SVG Grabber extension. So the SVG Grabber extension allows you to grab the SVGs that exist on the page. So as you can see, I probably have a bunch of SVGs here. I can click on the SVG Grabber and that's automatically gonna open a page that contains all of the SVGs that I have used on my page. So it depends on which page you're looking at and which page you clicked it from. And then as you can see, it's gonna show all SVGs from asadmehmood.com. So I can download all of the SVGs, but one thing that I really like about this particular plugin is if I don't want to download them and I just want to copy one of the SVGs, I can just say copy. And once I've copied them, these are copied onto the clipboard, I can just paste them. And as you can see, this is a vector format. I can go ahead and change the color as well. And yeah, that's pretty much why I like this particular plugin. It allow, It's really quick and it allows me to copy the uh, SVGs to my clipboard and just paste them right in Figma instead of downloading them and then copy pasting them, which I think is a bit of manual labor. And in the long term, it's going to save you a, a bunch of time. So that's the third extension. The fourth extension that I want to talk about is the <clears throat> HTML to Figma extension. Sometimes you want to duplicate a page or you want to get all the text that exists within the page, just to see the structure of the page. And in order to do so, you can just go to HTML to Figma, mm -hmm. click on it, capture the current page. And, and this is really quick as well. So it, act, it has actually captured the page as a JSON file. I can go here to Figma. I can open the Figma to HTML plugin. I can go to import to Figma tab and then 
at the bottom, use this Chrome, use the Chrome extension. I can go to the step two, upload the Figma JSON here. I'm gonna click on here and I'm just gonna copy or select the, uh, the file that has been downloaded. So as you can see, this particular file, this particular page is now in Figma. Obviously I can see there are some mistakes so I can obviously work around them, but what's really cool is it's downloading the SVG files, it's uh, downloading the text, it's downloading the colors and all of that stuff. It definitely is not perfect, but it still helps me get most of the content that I need that exists on that page if I wanted to work off of that. So that's really cool. Um, now coming to the fifth one, it is Screenly. So Screenly allows, is a, uh, image or a screenshot capturing plugin. It allows you to capture the visible page, let's say. So anything that's visible on the page, it's gonna allow me to capture it. Similarly, I can capture the entire page. If I want to, I can capture a selected area if I want to. So I can just capture this one and it's just gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of that and I can go ahead and copy or download it or share it and stuff along those lines. So I think that's really valuable as a free plugin. You can also record a video, you can download the entire page and all of that stuff. So, so it's really cool. Now coming to the last plugin, which I think is an extremely powerful plugin and I would highly recommend it, even though, and the caveat is it's paid. So you can experiment with it for let's say 30 days, but I would really recommend it if you are already getting some clients and you're already doing a, a bunch of explorations. And that is the Eagle plugin. So in order for the Eagle plugin to work, you have to go to eagle.cool. Once you're here, you can get the Eagle for Mac OS. You can go ahead and download that and you can download the Chrome extension. So once you have this Chrome extension, which you can see here, you can do the same thing that I mentioned previously as well. You can capture an area, capture a visible page, uh, capture visible, capture page. This is pretty similar to Screenly. But what I would recommend here is with this particular plugin, there's something magical that you can do. Imagine I'm trying to design a dashboard view. So I'm gonna search dashboard. Now, initially when I'm trying to design things, I usually try to get inspirations from different uh, projects, etc. So maybe I like some designs. I'm just gonna, I like this one and I'm gonna save that as for research purposes or inspiration pur pur purposes. So normally what I would do is I would go click on this, I would open the whatever it is and the image, I, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, I'm gonna go to Figma, I'm gonna paste it here. This is what I would normally do. But with this plugin, what I can do is instead, I can just keep on browsing. Okay, I like this one, so I'm just gonna drag it and I'm gonna say I wanna drag and drop it. I can also choose a folder, so I can say I wanna give this to a folder like dashboards. So once I've done that, I'm gonna say create the dashboards folder and I'm gonna save it. So that's done. You just need to do that once if your folder hasn't been created. So I really like this one as well. I'm just gonna drag it and I'm gonna drop it. Similarly, I like this one, drag and drop, like this one, drag and drop. Um, and I like this one, I like this one. So these are a bunch of like uh, items that I really like. Uh, I like this one, I'm gonna drag and drop it. So as you can see, all of these images are automatically being downloaded without me trying to do a bunch of different things. Now I'm gonna go into Eagle. And as you can see in Eagle, I have a bunch of these images downloaded. I also have one of the images downloaded in the dashboard folder. Uh, but since I didn't explicitly set this to download in the dashboard folder, so I can just go ahead and paste it here and that's gonna be downloaded into the dashboard folder. So if you want, you can organize it into folders. If not, that's fine as well. One great thing about this is you can also see, like for example, maybe you really wanna go back to the link. Usually what happens is similar to, I, I dragged this file here and now you lost the link, right? You don't really remember where you downloaded this file from, but because of Eagle, now you have a bunch of details here. You have the name, you have the URL that you downloaded it from, when you downloaded it, all of that fun stuff. But now that I've done all of that stuff, I can just go ahead and easily just paste them here. And that's the magical thing about it. I don't have to go ahead and actually manually copy, paste, do whatever, all of these things are stored locally as well. So I can easily go ahead and access them. This particular plugin I think is really, really powerful, especially if you have to work fast and it really helps you to just quickly grab a bunch of images for inspirations if you want to, and you can go ahead and start using them. So those are the plugins that I recommend. Let me know if you want me to do similar videos or if any of these plugins really help you, or if there are other plugins that you really like, do hit them up in the comments and let me know what you thought about the video. That's gonna be pretty much it. 
take care i'll see you later and do subscribe because i know most of the viewers that i have aren't really subscribed so i'll see you later bye